Hi guys, in this video I will be assembling the Ender 3 frame. While the instruction booklet that comes in the box shows you what goes where, it does not show you how to keep the frame square. That can lead to uneven wear on the rollers, binding in the axes, and skewed prints. So let's begin. You need a very basic set of tools, most of which are already supplied with the Ender 3. The machine is square that is shown here is also optional, and you can get a perfectly aligned frame without using it. The only additional item that you will need is a measuring tape or ruler, which most of us already have. I am going to start by connecting the three 4040 extrusions of the base, but I will not tighten them at this stage. The extrusions are cut perfectly square from the factory, so they will automatically align perpendicular to each other. The only thing that you need to take care of is the rotation of this extrusion. It should sit flush with the other two, and the easiest way I found for this is to use one of the extrusions from the frame itself. Place it diagonally like this and lightly press down on it, and that's it. Then you can tighten the bolts, and our base is ready. Next, we need to connect the 2040 extrusions for the Z-axis. This is the trickiest part of the frame, and also the most critical. You need to make sure that you use the correct extrusions for the right and left side. The left side will have the holes for the Z-axis motor mount, and the right side will have the holes for mounting the power supply. I am going to start by connecting them to the base, but I will not fully tighten the bolts. Placing the frame diagonally like this makes the process much easier. Now, the most important part of the alignment process is to get these two pillars parallel to each other. Whether you are using linear rails or the stock roller wheels, any misalignment here will cause premature wear on the rollers as the load will not be evenly distributed, and in the case of linear rails, they will start binding. In my previous installation of linear rails, I had not gone through this alignment step and I faced severe binding of the rails. I didn't know the importance of this alignment step at the time, and I ended up correcting for the misalignment by using a bunch of washers. Naturally, the end result was less than perfect. Because the extrusions are cut perfectly square from the factory, you don't have to worry about them being perpendicular to the base, however, they are free to rotate. Again, I am going to use the extrusion for the y-axis to check the alignment. As you can see, right now there is some misalignment. If you press the extrusion against one side, there is a gap on the other side. Ideally, there should be no gap. Because we have not fully tightened the bolts, it will be easier to twist the extrusions to bring them into alignment. To further aid in this, I am going to loosely bolt the top frame extrusion, but only on the side that I intend to twist. This will give me some leverage and allow finer movements. Here I have purposefully twisted the extrusion in the opposite direction to exaggerate the misalignment in order to clearly see the effect. Then, by holding the guide extrusion against the pillar with one hand, and slowly twisting the pillar with the other, you can make it near perfectly parallel. After finishing on one side, I will unbolt the top extrusion, and bolt it down on the other side so I can align this side as well. You will have to repeat the process a few times to get the perfect alignment. Once you are happy with it, go ahead and tighten all the bolts of the frame to lock in your efforts. It is a good idea to check the alignment once again after tightening the bolts in case something had shifted. Then we can move on to the next step. Here I have fixed the top extrusion but not tightened the bolts yet. You need to make sure that the spacing between the pillars is constant. You can verify this by taking one measurement at the top and another at the bottom. Both should be the same. Then you can go ahead and tighten the bolts, and check the alignment one final time to make sure everything is where it is supposed to be. This is my first upgrade to the printer frame. I will be adding these connecting plates to increase the rigidity of the frame. This is especially beneficial if you have a printer with a high Z build height. 
To connect the plates you need these hammer nuts and the appropriate size bolts. Be sure to check the extrusions are perpendicular to each other. Minor misalignment is acceptable here as I am later going to be installing Z-brace rods, and they can be used to pull the extrusions into place. Then you can tighten the bolts to lock the plates in place. Next, we can turn our attention to the Y-axis extrusion. After loosely connecting the bolts, you will have to make sure it's perpendicular by using the machinist square. As you can see here, the milled slot for the Y-axis extrusion is slightly oversized, so there is a small play. You must make sure here that the Y-axis is perfectly perpendicular to the frame. Any misalignment here will result in skewed prints later on. Then you can go ahead and tighten the bolts. What I am going to do next is only applicable to the original Ender 3 that has a 20-40 extrusion for the Y-axis. The newer models have 40-40 extrusions for the Y-axis, and they are much more stable. I have tightened the bolts to the maximum amount I am comfortable with. Even then you can see that 2040 extrusion is quite flimsy, and as the whole bed is going to be moving on this extrusion, this amount of play cannot be good. So my second upgrade to the frame is going to be adding these corner connectors. Here however, we are presented with a challenge. The Y-axis extrusion sits in a slot that has been milled in the base extrusion, and because of the difference in height, the holes of the corner bracket do not line up with the slot. So I had to drill out another hole in the connector, and with that, I can install them with hammer nuts and bolts. As you can see, this has made a significant improvement to the rigidity of the Y-axis. With that done, the base frame is now complete. I am now going to install the linear rails for the Y and Z axis. It is important to align them on the extrusions, and you can print guide pieces from Thingiverse for this purpose. That's all for this video, and in the next one I will install the BLV kit onto this Ender 3. Please like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos.